In Space 1999, the basic setup is some mysterious electromagnetic radiation source causes to explode uh, some vast dump of uh, nuclear waste. Now, I'm not a nuclear physicist, so the first part of that, I think I will just ignore. Um, why were they storing nuclear waste in space? I'm not sure. That's not really how you, you fuel up uh, rockets. Uh, you do get nuclear batteries. In fact, they're very good for uh, long-lived power supplies and, and, and robotic missions. But the main problem is, if you blow up <laughs> nuclear waste or something to the extent that they suggest in Space 1999, in that it wrenches the moon out of its orbit uh, and, and causes it to fly around the cosmos, you're going to blow up the moon. Uh, and, and so there's a bit of a sort of hand wavy uh, part at the start. And the other thing is the distances between objects in space. They're sort of encountering adventures and sort of aliens and all that sort of stuff pretty quickly. But this, well, for example, the Voyager missions have been traveling continuously at enormous velocities through space uh, since the 70s until now, it's still happening. And they have not anywhere nearly reached the edge of just our solar system. Are moon bases themselves sort of inherently fanciful? Well, not really. I mean, NASA's had various ideas since, uh, since back in the 1950s. And in fact, recently, uh, there's been a sort of resurgence of interest uh, and in fact, uh, agreements about this. Uh, Russia and the Chinese Space Agency, they have a, an international lunar research station uh, uh, planned. Uh, NASA have a foundational lunar base. Once again, phenomenal engineering challenge. You're trying to build something self-contained in an environment uh, which is pretty difficult in lots of ways, to say the least. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not a completely daft idea. It's, it's just very, very difficult, will probably be very, very expensive. Um, but you know, fingers crossed, it, it could work.